start living like a king. Everybody say, I am a king's kid. I think like a king. I look like a king. I talk like a king. I act like a king. I am a king. You're a king. Jesus is the king of kings, and you're to reign in authority. Friend, I'm so glad to have you with us today. We are going to be sharing from a live teaching where I've been communicating about how to possess our destiny through our relationship with the Creator. So open your heart and receive the good word of God today. I believe that God wants to bless you and help you move into those things that He prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Blessings. Let's go to Psalm 139. I want to read verse 13 to verse 18. But we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It says here in Psalm 139, verse 13, for you have possessed my reins. The modern English version of this says you have possessed my inner parts. It's talking about your spirit. God is the creator of your spirit. You are a spiritual being. Amen? If you're going to worship God, you worship God from the Spirit. Job says this in Job 32, verse 8, there is a spirit in man, and the, what's he say, the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. Every one of you has a spirit in you. James says the body without the spirit is dead. But if you're going to know the things of God, you're going to have to know them by the Spirit. And so he says, he says, you have possessed my spiritual being. You have covered me in my mother's womb. He says in verse 14, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Did you know what? God does not create anybody to be a flop. God doesn't create anybody to be a failure. Every creation, we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. He says, marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows right well. You need to know the works of God, not only from your spirit, but also from your soul. My substance, he now begins to talk about your body, was not hid from you when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Your eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect or not yet complete, not yet wholly formed. And in your book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. Man, God has good thoughts of us. God has thoughts of peace and not of evil. Amen? And did you know the way that you find out your destiny? You find your destiny through, your, through God, through understanding your creator, because God, as your creator, created you for a purpose. And that purpose is greater than yourself. You know, if you're all wrapped up in yourself, you are a small package. You need to get over your bad self. Man, I'm telling you, it's not just about you. It's about Jesus. It's about fulfilling what God, you know, some people don't want to follow God wholly because they think, man, if I follow God, he's going to put me out on some, you know, strange place out in the middle of the wilderness and I'm going to hate it. No, that's not it. God knows you better than you know yourself. And if you really get connected with him and start moving into what God has for you, did you know what? You're going to love it. I tell you what, I could not even have imagined some of the things that God has already done with me. And he's not even done yet. 
I am amazed at the goodness of God. I am amazed at the thing that God does. Amen? I'm just thrilled. But you get to know these things by God. He is your creator, and your creator created you for a purpose. Your creator created you for a destiny. And if you want to find out your destiny, you need to get to know God. You need to get to know your creator. You find it in God, and do you know what? You fulfill it through your relationship with God. That's the only way you're going to get it done. And sometimes I look around, and I'm amazed at what God does. Praise God. Now, if you're following God and you're moving into his plan, don't think that there are never going to be any difficulties. Jeremiah was talking about that. He said, listen, for 70 years, you're going to go into bondage. That was not exciting news, but he said, if you'll call on me, if you'll seek me, you'll find me. I still got it. <coughs> Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what destroys a lot of people is they have unrealistic expectations. <coughs> and there's two sides of this. There's people who have these unrealistic expectations, and they just think, man, I'm just going to go out here and change the world so fast. Max Cornell what came here, Max is a tremendous teacher of the Word of God. He worked for me for three years, tremendous integrity. Um, Greg Moore said Max Cornell was the best teacher that ever graduated from Karis Bible College. And Max had a plan that he was going to go to Kansas City and have a church of a 1,000 people in, in three or four or five years. And did you know what? He didn't. And he's been going something like 10 years. And we've helped him a lot. It's been supernatural. I think it's amazing what he's done. And he has like 300 that show up now every service, every Sunday or something like that or a week. But Max is doing a tremendous job. And I believe that Max is going to grow. I believe eventually that he will have a 1,000 people. But it takes time. Man, Brian Clark started in uh, Greenville or something, North Carolina, and we helped Brian uh, buy a church and it was supernatural. We got this great deal. And Brian had been very successful out in the world. He had worked in the banking industry and all this. And do you know what? I'm sure Brian had these great thoughts of building a big church. And he's been going now for a number of years, probably seven years or eight years. And did you know last on Easter, Brian had 192 people. And he was just rejoicing. And I was rejoicing with him. It was over 25% growth from what he had a year ago, and I said, Brian, that is fantastic. But you know, a lot of people are just unrealistic, and they don't know what it really is, and they don't understand. Do you know Jesus had over 5,000 pe people following him in John chapter 6, and in one day he preached one message and had 12? <laughs> and I'm sure he heard God, and I'm sure he did what God told him to do. Andrew Womack preached at this huge church, and he told the pastor, it was thousands of people. He said, I'm sure if you'd give me this church for six months, I could take it down to two or three hundred. Because <laughs> Andrew's actually had a little experience pastoring. And he knows it's a lot different than you think. Praise God. And I'm telling you, some ways that people grow their churches, I just don't want to do it. Because I flat don't want to compromise what God's called me to preach and who God's called me to be. And I know my voice isn't just to this local congregation. I know my voice is going to the nations. I know my voice is going to this nation. It, Cecil actually gave me a word on that, and I actually believe it. Amen? But God has good plans. God has good thoughts for us. And he says, before you form me, my members were written in your book, which in continuance were fashioned. When, when they were there, not, nobody knew them. How precious, he says in verse 17, are your thoughts to me, O God, and how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand, and when I awake, I am still with you. Praise God. God's presence is amazing. And you know what? You get to know God, and you stay in his presence, and you'll find good things. In Psalm chapter 8, David also talks about, you know, God's plan for us and God's purpose for us and how that we are created for a purpose. And so I want you to turn to Psalm chapter 8, and we're going to just read through it really quickly. He says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who has set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. 
You know, one thing God has called us all to, God has called us to praise. And Jesus actually quoted this at the triumphal entry. I think it's in Matthew uh, chapter 21. I might be wrong on that place, but Jesus quoted this. And when he quoted it, he said, out of the mouths of babes you have ordained praise that you might still the mouth of the enemy and the avenger. You know, if the devil is messing with your brain, you just need to start praising God and glorifying God and magnifying God. If you feel miserable, it's because you're focused on the wrong things. Hallelujah. So start praising God. Start glorifying God. Take authority in your mind. He says, when I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which you ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? He says in verse 5, for you made him a little lower than the angels. The word angels in Psalm 8, 5 is the Hebrew word Elohim. And it says you made him just a little lower than yourself, than God, Elohim. It's the same word that's used for God in Genesis 1, verse 1, where it says in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. And when it says in Psalm 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. It's talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And he later goes on in verse 2, he says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. In verse 26, we'll read it a minute of Genesis chapter 1. He says, God said, Let us make man in our own image. So number one, we were created to praise, but he goes on, said, You made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. God created humanity for glory and honor. You are created for the glory of God. You are created for the honor of God. Amen? If you will start living for the glory of God and the honor of God, God will honor you. And things God honors may be completely different than things the world honors. He says in verse 6, You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. So he says, number one, you're created to praise. Number two, you're created for glory and honor, the glory and honor of God. And number three, you're created for dominion. You're created to operate in authority. Friends, I'm so glad that you've been watching today. We've been sharing on possessing our destiny. We have a lot more of this teaching available. It's on our website. It's free of charge, downloadable audio, downloadable video. So go there to our website at charischristiancenter.com and take advantage of this and many other teachings. Blessings. We went to Pastor Lawson and we said we were just, you know, needing some guidance, some wisdom on how to believe or whatever. But he said, I feel like God is telling me you're going to get all this money all in one chunk. We just started calling that money in. That money came. We got the check before the end of the year. And it actually, there was, it paid enough for to cover all the medical debt. And there was 10000 left. Did you know what? God made man to operate in authority. God did not make you to be beat from here to there by the devil. Some Christians talk about the devil more than they talk about God. You need to realize that the devil is a defeated foe, that Jesus conquered him at the cross. He has absolutely no power over you or no authority unless you give it to him. The devil's only real power is deception. So if you can break his deception, you can break his power. So quit talking so much about the devil this, the devil that, the devil something else. There's a God in heaven. Amen. He's on the throne. Jesus is still Lord. The Word of God still works. And the Holy Spirit's been sent to live in you. And when you were born again, you were born into authority as a believer. You were born into health, born into wealth, born into authority as a believer. And if you begin to understand your authority in the gospel, you'll quit living like a wimp and start living like a king. Everybody say, I am a king's kid. I think like a king. 
I look like a king. I talk like a king. I act like a king. I am a king. You're a king. Jesus is the king of kings, and you're a reign in authority. Romans 5, verse 17 talks about that, that you went from the reign of sin and death to the reign of grace and righteousness by the faith, uh, by faith in Jesus. And we reign in life, it says, by one Jesus Christ. Amplified says, we reign in life as king. God never created you to be ruled over by the devil. God created mankind to rule and reign, and we need to find out who we are in Christ and take our authority in the name of Jesus and with the Word of God and start operating in the victory that He's given us. So number one, we're created for praise. Number two, for the glory and honor of God. And number three, He created us for authority. He said, you put all things under his feet, all sheep, all oxen, all beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Man, God created us for his glory. God created us for authority. God created us to praise him. Amen. God created you to bring forth glory to Jesus. And when you begin to understand that, you'll begin living in a brand new way. Amen? Now turn to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to talk just very, very briefly about the creation. But if you study the creation, when God created heaven and earth, he starts with things that are lower in creation, and then he goes to the higher aspects of creation. And the highest of God's creation is humanity. And he says here at the end of this in Genesis 1, verse 26, we'll just go there. God said, let us make man in our image. We are created in the image of God after our likeness and let them have dominion. Again, God in the initial creation created humanity to rule and reign. Satan came in Genesis chapter 3 got involved, tempted Eve and Adam, got involved too, and they lost their dominion. But Jesus came to bring us back into dominion. Okay, that's the Bible in a nutshell right there. Okay? But he says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, created he him, male and female, created he them. When God created man, God created them male and female. There are only two genders, male and female. Last year when I went to Kansas City to preach for Max Cornell, the, the mayor over there, both the mayor of Kansas City, if I'm correct, and the governor of Kansas. Kansas is a great conservative state. Overall, they do really well, but they got this crazy governor. And I think the Kansas City mayor is crazy too. And they built this new airport in Kansas City. And you walk in the door and there's this big bathroom that says, all gender bathroom. And people are sitting at this looking at like a cow at a new guy. And so I'm out there preaching. And I'm like, you know, there are only two genders, male and female. If your heart having a hard time figuring out what your gender is, just check out how God made you. This is dumb gone to seed. And it is just crazy. And you know why that Satan is attacking the creation and what you're created to be? Because he's attacking the purpose that God created us for. Look at verse 28. He says in verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air over every living thing that moves on the earth. There is no way that if you don't identify with the gender that God made you to be, that you can be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. 
You take an island out in the middle of the ocean and you put, that's uninhabited, you put a hundred women on this island and come back in a hundred years if they have no outside influence and all you're going to have is a bunch of bones. You take another island like it, you put a hundred men, you come back in a hundred years and if they have no outside influence, all you've got is a bunch of bones. But you take an island out in the middle of the Pacific that's by itself, that's uninhabited, you know, by human life and put 50 men and 50 women and come back in 100 years and you'll have a living, breathing, multiplying society because that is how God created us to be. And a lot of this gender nonsense that's going on is an attack against your identity. It's attack against the creator. This stuff is crazy. I'm telling you, this stuff going on. Some of the leadership of this city that some of my friends say, oh, they're, they're a pastor. They're preaching just like you, Pastor Lawson. They own two businesses in Colorado Springs, and both of them, they have the gay fla flag hanging up. I'll be dead and in the grave before anybody will hang a gay flag in this church. Not only that, we got over 400 newcomers in D2. D2 can't pay their bills because of these newcomers. They took $9 million away from the police department in Denver, Colorado, and gave it to the newcomers. They're giving them $90,000 per year per person. They took $2.5 million away from the fire department. They're pulling the drug dogs and the bomb dogs out of the DIA. And all this nonsense that's going on in these colleges, let me tell you what's really happening. This nonsense going on in these colleges is not a bunch of college students. There are people that have been paid to be there. There are people that have come across the border. There are people that are involved in terrorism. Lester Sumrall, years ago in the Philippines, people were marching and and fighting the United States of America, and he went and grabbed a sign out of their hand and threw it on the ground and said, who gave you that? And people would say, these people came and paid us. This was in the 1960s. Paid us to carry this sign. They disrupted the election in 2020 by all that BLM, burn down city nonsense, and they're trying to disrupt the elections this year by all this nonsense going on in these universities. And that's what it is. It's pure nonsense. And by the grace of God, I'm believing that it backfires and the people of America are smart enough to figure out what God is doing. Amen. But you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. And don't you believe everything that's told you? Because there are a lot of lies. God created people, male and female, you're one or the other, and that's how God made you, and that's the only way that you can fulfill God's purpose, which is to be productive, be increasing, be refilled, be refueled, and control your environment. God created us to rule and to reign. God created us for dominion, and God created us to live a blessed life. Read on down the very next verse in verse 29. And God said, I've given you every herb bearing seed and every tree yielding seed. You know what? He said, I want you to be productive. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to replenish. I want you to take dominion. And I've given something, given you something to do it. I've given you everything that has seed, it reproduces. And every animal that's got life, they reproduce. Hallelujah. And God, after that, he says, I've given to you every beast of the earth, every fowl, everything that creeps wherein there's life. Man is the highest of God's creation. Man is created for the glory and the honor of God. Man is created to praise and glorify and magnify the most high God, the creator of heaven and earth. And man is created to operate in dominion. And when you take what God's given you, you can do it. And God looked at everything that he made and he saw and he said, it is very good. 
So my conclusion is really simple. Do you want to understand your destiny? Understand your creator. Because your destiny comes from your creator. Friend, thanks so much for being with us today. We've been sharing on how you can possess your destiny through knowing your creator. The goal of the gospel is for us to know God, and we get to know God through Jesus Christ. We get to know God through his word, and we get to know God through our relationship with the Holy Spirit. I have trained prayer ministers that are here ready to minister to you. If you need to receive Christ, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or receive prayer for any of God's promises, I encourage you today to call us. We're ready to receive your calls. Also, I wanna say a great big thank you to our partners who help us take this message of Christ and his love for us around the world. We cannot do this without partners like you. So thank you to our partners. If you wanna become a partner, just give us a call today. We're ready to receive your calls, whether it's to receive prayer or to become a partner. Thanks so much and God bless you today. To understand your destiny, you must first know your Creator. In order to step into the good plans that God has for you, it is essential to have a relationship with Jesus. You're not here by accident. We'd like to bless you with a digital copy of Possessing Our Destiny, a $20 value free of charge. You can download your copy today by going to charischristiancenter.com. Friends, I'm Pastor Lawson Purdue from Karis Christian Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and we are celebrating 23 years of the grace of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God at our anniversary service. My friend and mentor, Andrew Womack, will be teaching here at the church. We'd love to have you at Karis Christian Center for our 23rd anniversary celebration. Blessings. Friend, I invite you to pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and you raised him from the dead on the third day and made him Lord. And right now, I surrender my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.